This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. To see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Let's begin the sample. Let's create a distribution group. I'll just click on the plus sign. Again, I've got recipients selected and group selected. Select distribution group. Let's give it a display name. This is what's going to show up in the address book. So when we are in Outlook and we clicked on the address book, this is what shows up. So let's say this is for the IT department. Now the alias, this is what's going to be used for the email address. So the left side of the email address. So if it's IT department at itdvds.com, this is what's going to show up. And there are certain things we can and can't do with an email address. We can't have spaces. And if I just type a space, hit tab, go back up to it, we can see exactly what's allowed. So valid values are strings formed with characters from A to Z, upper and lower case, digits from 0 to 9. Also, we can use these special characters here. Uh, might want to be weary of using special characters in an email address. Let's me know one or more periods may be embedded in the alias, but each period should be preceded and followed by at least one of the other characters. So I may use something like underscores instead of spaces. So my, if my display name has a space, I'll replace it with an underscore. So like IT underscore department. Or I may just take out the spaces. Whatever convention we decide on, that's what we want to stick to. Hopefully we don't have a lot of different naming conventions going on. Now also in the display name, where it shows up in the address book, something kind of useful is to give groups a prefix. Something like maybe uh, DG. Or you could even say group. So that when they show up in the address list, they're all organized. So that all the groups are listed together. What I mean by this, if I go to Outlook, click on the To field, is you can see how the groups are in bold, which is nice, but imagine if you have thousands of thousands of users, and your groups are you know, intermingled with those users. That can make it kind of hard to find the group you're looking to send to, but if you have a prefix, like DG underscore, something like that, then all the groups will be listed together here in your global address list, which can make the, the group much easier to find for the user. And then down here we can add a description. Uh, if the group name isn't very descriptive, we could add a more detailed description here. Organizational unit, these are groups that are created in Active Directory. So we want to select where we want to put the, the group. I'll put it in my Chicago Groups OU. And we scroll down here. Owners, these are generally people who are going to be able to manage the group. And that's not necessarily always just the IT people. We can have groups that are managed by uh, other people. Like let's say we have the accounting department manager, and we want the accounting department manager to manage his own distribution group. So we can do that. And down here we've got members. So these are the members of the group that are going to receive the email when it's sent to this particular group. So I might add Bob Smith and let's say Steve Bellows. We can also add other groups. That's called nesting groups. So when that happens, the email gets sent not only to the members of this group, like Bob Smith and Steve Bellows, if I added the human resources group, it would also be sent to all the members of the human resources group. So we can do that as well. Down here we can choose whether owner approval is required to join the group. By default it's open. Anyone can join this group without being approved by the group owners. Then we have closed. Members can be added only by the group owners. All requests to join will be rejected automatically. And then owner approval. All requests are approved or rejected by the group owners. So I'm going to go ahead and select owner approval and we'll get into the details of this in the intermediate and advanced training. Uh, and then we've got choose whether the group is open to leave, open or closed. I'm going to go ahead and close that and save. And that's it. We've created our group IT department here. You can see the email address is IT department at itdvds.com. Let's go over to Active Directory and take a look at this. 
Let's go back here, refresh. And here it is. So we can see the group type is distribution group universal. And if we go over to Outlook, go to our address book, there it is, group IT department. If I double click on it, I can see the members. And now users can use this group to send email.